I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Thursday, November the 11th, Veterans Day, brought to you in part by Norbrook. Here's a short video. This is Corbett Wall with the feeder flash. I'm here with Bruce Brinkmeyer, who's Vice President of Sales and Marketing North America for Norbrook. Bruce, can you tell us a little bit about Norbrook? Sure, Corbett. Thanks. Uh, Corbett, Norbrook's a lot like a lot of your listeners where um, it's a 50-year-old family-owned business. Um, started originally in Ireland uh, as a manufacturing company in the pharmaceutical business. Are generic products different than Pioneer products? And if so, can you tell us a little bit about the differences? <clears throat> well, there's a lot of things that are similar. Uh, first of all, all of our facilities where they're manufactured are FDA approved and, and have to meet all the specifications of any other product. And the, the testing that goes on after manufacturing is all the same. Uh, the opportunity with generics sometimes is to enhance the products actually uh, with better packaging or different product characteristics uh, but it has to be the same amount of active ingredient and and for the same claim purposes same treatment regimens sounds to me like a no no brainer to be using uh, some of these generic products when you're looking at being cost effective right it's been interesting to watch in the human side ourselves Whenever we're given the option to take generics, we're pretty fast to do that usually, right? Sure. But when it comes to treating our animals, sometimes we hesitate a little bit and a little bit more cautious. Yeah. And the truth is, is that we should be just as um, ready to try a generic on our animals as we are ourselves. I don't think the cattle are going to care. Um, a lot of times, even the diseases don't know the difference <laughs> when they get treated. So it's, it's a good thing for everybody. Thank you very much. For more information, go to norbrook.com. Another $2. Uh, this, this fat cattle market is really on the rise here. We are so short of market-ready cattle that these packers are scrambling for cattle, uh, out looking for any available supplies that are in loose hands. Uh, of course, they're getting their normal formula cattle. They're getting their grid cattle turned in, but they need all the available cattle that are out there and those cattle that are uh, that are up for negotiation uh, in the country and they are out looking for cattle and even buying uh, the planer cattle at top of the market there but uh, it's it's uh, it's really a great thing and it's right while we're talking about this new uh, compromise bill the cattle price discovery and transparency act that I've been talking about this week and if you guys haven't heard that go back a couple of feeder flash videos uh, where I talked uh, in depth more about this new bill but it's a bipartisan thing and and uh, it's it's it can get passed and it will give us a minimum requirement of negotiated cash cattle and and I think you guys uh, really should get behind this it's not everything that we want not a silver bullet uh, a lot of people are disgusted with that but it's something it's something that we can get and we can get it right away. Uh, some of the other trade associations besides U.S. Cattlemen's Association that have been very instrumental in getting this bill done, uh, they've kind of they've kind of licked their finger and, and stuck it up in the air to see uh, where the wind's blowing and what they should support and see uh, you know really what their stance is on this bill. But uh, I'm here to tell you, it's something that we can get. It's all we'll ever get. It's adjustable where we can continue working with that bill uh, in the future to try to get more all the time. But uh, you just got to get behind it, guys. It's, it's all that's there. It's something that we can do, and, and it's a real obtainable thing. Let's talk about your board. Uh, on Wednesday, December Live Cattle Futures down 20 cents at 132, and that is right on par uh, with what they got in the country. 32 that's and that was from the north to the south guys uh, a few spreads going a little bit lower than that but for the most part cattle are bringing 132 and suddenly we're right here on the December spot live cattle futures month and sitting right on par with that February was up 12 cents at 136.82 you've gone out from there on your back months and they were just mixed but not too much of anything down a quarter to up 15 cents November feeder cattle down a buck and a quarter, and that was all due to your grains, but uh, down 125 on November at 156.65.
January was down a buck seventy five at one fifty eight oh five. All your back months were down too as these grains are getting out of control again as your market's just kind of absorbing uh, your report that came out earlier in the week uh, that was uh, bullish for your corn especially there and and, uh, and it's having more effects as we go forward here but your back months on feeder cattle down 82 cents to down a buck 65. Talked a little bit about your fat cattle trade but we had a significant confirmed trade on Wednesday and there'll be more that they didn't pick up on Wednesday that'll come in uh, on the roundup that re reports out on Thursday morning but uh, significant trade Iowa 10,600 head confirmed on Wednesday uh, almost 21,000 for the week so far 130 to mostly 132 and we blew right by that 30 and I had told you guys here over the past several weeks that we were trying to get to that 130 level that I thought once we got to the 130 that the doors would just fall in and, and we would go well into the 30s and it's looking like that's turning out to be reality but uh, your, it was uh, it was this week's turn for your dress market to gain a bunch and uh, I told you live cattle were up two bucks dressed market was up mostly five bucks uh, with dress trade from 205 to 207 confirmed in Iowa. Nebraska 7600 head confirmed on Wednesday almost 10,000 so far for the week uh, live spread from 130 and a half to mostly 132 there and dress trade from 206 to mostly 207 that's just a lot better than what we've seen here uh, in the recent past. Kansas 8400 head and that's all they've had so far this week 131 to mostly 132 and Texas 4100 head that's all they've had for the week 131 to mostly 132 so whipping and spurring on this fat cattle market box beef cutout values were down hard uh, on your Wednesday session there and backing up as uh, they're moving product they're, they're filling orders that they had taken uh, as, as your uh, retailers are, are buying up product to, to offer to their folks uh, for the holiday season it's going to be a lot higher I mean we've just got inflation at every level every single thing that you want to buy and, and meats are a big part of that of course your retailers are going to get their part the backers are going to get a huge part and finally uh, your your cattle feeders and your producers are starting to see uh, you know some some higher prices at their level too but choice boxes on Wednesday afternoon 285.52 down 228 selects were down four dollars even at 266.62 your slaughter uh, running at a pretty good clip here 365,000 that's the same as we had last week on a pretty good week and uh, 12,000 more than the same week a year ago I'm going to be uh, in Gainesville, or I'm in Gainesville, Texas now, I'm going to be in Gainesville, Texas on Thursday for the Lone Star Angus uh, production sale. And uh, if you guys are looking for some working, some affordable ewes and bulls uh, for your commercial outfit, uh, go on to dvauction.com and check out Lone Star Angus. It's going to be on Thursday there. Or if you're in the area at uh, Cook County Fairgrounds in, in Gainesville, come on out to the sale. Uh, talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index on DV auction on Wednesday late, sitting at 154.14, up 74 cents just from uh, from Tuesday's close there. So big gains, and we've got some hellacious feeder cattle quotes to give you guys. How about our big markets? OKC West, El Reno, Oklahoma, 10,900 head for their sale. Feeders were fully steady, and that's good because they gained a lot of ground last week, guys, but to hold that was significant. Uh, the calf offering was kind of hard uh, to compare because they had kind of a value-added sale this week uh, with a lot bigger offerings, so it was hard to compare to a small offering last week, but sharply higher in your calf prices, and, and the yearlings were selling awful good, too. You look at this quote on some yearling feeders out of El Reno. 56 head, 818 pound steers bring 162.75. Of course, they had a big sale at Cherokee Sales Company, Cherokee, Oklahoma. That's where they had the regional qualifier for LMA's World Livestock Auctioneer Championship. 
I was competing there, uh, had a lot of fun, got a lot of camaraderie with, uh, you know, some of the other participants and contestants and the buyers and just, uh, you know, it was a big gathering there and they had over 7,500 head. That's more cattle than they can hold. Tell you what, the trucks were, were scheduled coming in there and then they were filling them right back up. It was a heyday for local truckers around that area there in western Oklahoma, but uh, just had one heck of a sale there. Hard to compare, of course, uh, with last week with a big special like that, but uh, I did not make the top 10, did not qualify for the semifinals in Shipshawana, Indiana this next summer here coming up, so uh, likely the demand for me auctioneering is not going to keep me from doing my day job here so you guys can rest easy but uh, gonna stay active here on the day job which normally keeps me up half the night but uh, they had a lot of impressive quotes out of Cherokee I'm gonna give you one of them 61 head 893 pound steers Cherokee Oklahoma 158.75 give you several high quotes from all over the country how about winter livestock in Dodge City Kansas uh, 94 head, 781 pound short yearlings there, bring 171.50. Goodness. Uh, about a market that doesn't normally sell big long strings, uh, but whenever they get them, they can sell them, especially on a market like this. But North Arkansas Livestock and Green Forest, Arkansas, look at this quote from them 150 head, 809 pound yearling steers. Bring 156.85 in Green Forest, Arkansas. How about Parsons, Kansas? Parsons Livestock Auction. They had a heck of a sale there and sold yearlings right at the top of the market. 116 head of steers weighed 921 in Parsons, Kansas. Bring 156.85. But sorry, guys. Bassett, Nebraska had a sale on Wednesday, a big special, and my goodness. On an up market here where the fat cattle market's clicking and everything's going good, even though your feeder board was down uh, big time because of your grains, and I, I forgot to mention them, but corn was up 14 and a half cents a bushel on Wednesday. Kansas City hard red winter wheat uh, were all up, uh, you know, over 20 cents a bushel. It's just getting ridiculous. But uh, Bassett Livestock had 6,100 head there. Uh, from two weeks ago, they called the market steady to two bucks higher. Uh, your, your market news service did there, but gosh, it looked better than that to me. But uh, you look at this automated market report from Cattle Market Central through DV Auction, and you can just see these, every one of these uh, weight groups, it looks like a top individual quote anywhere else and that's the weighted average prices that they had for all the cattle uh, within those weight groups but you look at the best tested weights a thousand and thirty nine head of five weight steers in Bassett average right on 550 pounds with a weighted average price on all of them of 185.34 that's what I'm talking about that would be extreme top quote anywhere else how about 1149 head of the six weight steer calves average 639 with a weighted average price of 172.71. Goodness, didn't have quite as many yearlings because there's not very many of them left, but 418 head of your eight weight uh, feeder steers there in Bassett, Nebraska, averaged 860 with a weighted average price of 168.75, and that was helped uh, by one jag of a heavy eight weight steers that bring 172.60. How about some of the heifers? 597 head of your five weight heifer calves, average 545 pounds, 159.13 was your weighted average price on all the five weight heifers, and 449 head of your eight weight feeder heifers averaged 835 pounds with a weighted average price on those eight weight heifers of 154.43. Your Zach Tran top quotes for the day, uh, you can pick them, uh, you know, I could have picked a 25 of them out, but I'm going to pick a, uh, the biggest quote on calves was 81 head, individual quote, 550, 568 pound steer calves and Bassett, bring $195, guys, way on the top side of your fives. And then your big yearling quote was 205 head of 1,043 pound yearling feeder steers, Bassett, Nebraska, bring $162. And that's your feeder flash for Thursday.